Welcome to Brojo Builds. If you like what you see, please like, share, and subscribe. If you have any ideas for future content, please leave in the comments below. I hope you enjoy. So, we just finished torquing all the rod bolts. And before we get the pan on, we need to get the rear cover and the rear main seal. So, while we're here, one of the most important things you need to do in your rebuild is replace this dog bone. Or at least the seal on the dog bone. Um, if you, this seal breaks, you won't have filtered oil. And that's a no-no. So, you get your seal, put a new seal on it. Our rebuild kit came with everything and came with a new dog bone. Um, I will also list it in the description a few different things that you may need, including this rebuild kit, in case you uh, uh, would like to use the same kit that we used. So, you can take the seal, good old Vaseline, petroleum jelly of any type of sort. Uh, it's gonna be your friend here, and you're just gonna coat the seal just so that you're not putting it in <laughs> dry. You nasty. No pun intended. Uh, so that you don't tear the seal itself. Slide it in here. There. Should be a fairly tight fit. That's perfect. Now to the rear plate. This only goes on one way. As you see here, you got the notch for the dog bone. You really can't screw this up here. Yeah, um, so make sure you put it on the right way. Take your rear plate. Line it up together. Put a bolt through it. Put another bolt that started. And you're just gonna start, you can start all the bolts lightly. Because we're gonna be using a tool. This tool, I have a link in the description as well. It's a tool that you should have if you're gonna be doing multiple LS engines. It's something that is good to have in your toolbox. Once you get started, you're gonna use your tool. I'll put a picture of the tool and you know, use the tool to help center this plate with your crank. If you don't do this you have a hard time putting your seal in and you will mess up your seal and you will end up having leaks and no one wants a brand new engine that leaks. So uh, this tool I believe is 30 some odd bucks. Um, I'll leave a link in the description and it's it pretty much a must have if you're going to be doing any LS engines. More, you want to make sure that this is able to slide in and out. You want to be able to move freely like it is right here and uh, be able to take it out. And you take your rear main seal, make sure you're going in the right direction and the seal is going where it's supposed to. And you can use a little petroleum jelly just to coat around the seal. You can do front and rear here. Front and rear. 
the inside and the outside of it, the inner and outer. It'll help you knock this in place. So you get in and you use the same tool. When it's nice and centered like it is, as you see here, it went in pretty much no problem. I almost didn't even need to use a hammer. I'm gonna just pretty much give it a little light tap everywhere. Just to make sure it's, it's bottomed out. And that's perfect. So, the seal is already on, and uh, we're ready to put this back on the engine stand and get the pan back on it and get the show on the road. We're almost done here. All right, y'all. I'm definitely not perfect. Um, I put these on snug, but I didn't tighten it up on when I was recording. So, make sure you tighten everything up. You know, I'm not going to torque them down, and to some of you, that's sacrilege, but I'm just going to go in a crisscross pattern and work. You don't want to he-man it on, at the same time, you don't want it to be loose. All right, now it's tight. So uh, yeah, don't do what I almost just did and forget to tighten in your bolts. It does happen, but don't do it. You'll regret it. All right, so we knocked the, the lower crank gear in a little off camera. You just take a socket around the same size, uh, above the size of the, the crank snout but not too big that it goes over um, the cam gear and you, you just tap it in place there and we're about to install the cam now this is going to be the difference between you know a high horsepower build a truck build or what depending on what you're going to be doing um, this is going to determine where your power is going to be at so for this application we chose this summit cam I'll see a, a post to take a picture and uh, you can take a look at it. It only has 209 degrees at 50 and uh, 217 in exhaust. By no means this cam is big, but the whole purpose for this cam is to be for a truck application that's actually going to be towing. So it's, gonna, it's definitely a step up from the factory. Uh, so compared to what the factory cam is, it's definitely a lot healthier. But. Um, and it's going to give you a little lope, but it's going to be very streetable, you know, it's not going to be super radical and it be a very usable cam for a daily driven application. If you're going to put in a hot rod or whatnot, you could get yourself a much bigger cam than we, we're using. And literally that's the difference between a 350 horse build with a stock cam and a 450 horse build will literally be the cam you choose. You know, the bigger and more aggressive you go with a cam, the less streetable it's gonna be, but at the same time, the more, you know, power is gonna make. And again, where your power band's gonna be. Being that this is a LS, and this is a hydraulic roller, we don't really need to use no assembly lube. We'll be okay with just plain oil. Just lube up, lube by your cam journals. On, on this, we we uh, installed new cam bearings on this motor. So um, you know, we want to be careful not to nick them, whether new or old. 
blew up your cam journals. It's all different tools where it can help you, uh, you know, hold the cam in place. As you see here, I've done a few this way. And once you get to the end here, if the motor is open, you can at times reach in the back and help you line up. Or just give in and use a bolt. I'll use one bolt with the gear I want it to go in as smooth as possible obviously for cam on camera you don't want to just jam it in there either and there you go the cam is installed installed Jesus I need to make sure I speak clearly. I tend to at times slur my words a little bit. The next thing we're going to do is install the cam retaining plate. Uh, this plate has a gasket here that we need to replace. If you don't replace this gasket, you're going to end up losing oil pressure and uh, having some oiling issues. It's a quick fit or a quick thing to do while you have it apart and something that you don't want to skimp on skimp on like right now i run my hand across the top surface you you barely could feel the gasket so uh, if you have anything that's compromising or not allowing it to seal you can end up losing oil pressure and that's going to be a very sad day for everybody involved um when it comes to your cam retaining plates they have a gasket on it now i have two plates here this is the one that originally came with this motor and I was under I thought I saw the gasket in the gasket set and I was wrong I'm actually not 100% sure off the top of my head if you could get just a gasket but whenever you get the plate this is very crucial now if you feel that you can't feel the gasket when you run your finger across that it really is pretty smooth with the plate do not reuse the plate or a gasket um, right here you can see it's kind of raised. Let me see if I can see that in the camera. But you can see kind of the red portion focus. But you can kind of see that the red is a little bit raised above the plate. On this plate it's pretty just straight smooth across. And you cannot uh, not have the steel because you have no oil pressure and no oil pressure means a really sad day for you. Uh, it means that you have to take the engine, whole engine apart and if you don't catch it early enough you pretty much wreck the whole engine over what this replacement plate costs 20 bucks so instead of being cheap this is something you don't cheap out and on. It's one of those things that are at times often overlooked and may at times give the LS a little bit of bad rap when people do cam swaps and uh, they do not replace you know a cheap plate like this they overlook it and end up costing them an engine in the future so we're putting on the cam retaining plate get the ratchet Alright, I'm gonna be a human torque wrench again and I'm just gonna put on just make sure it's nice and snug. Don't over torque it. You know, don't don't act like a superhero. Just make sure it's tight and everything moves freely.
So we're about to get the cam and timing chain hooked up. We're just gonna go dot to dot. Your number one cylinder should be at top dead center. The dot should be pointing up. The center. The piston's all the way up to the top. And you want the dot on the, the crank gear pointing up. And you have the, the dot here on the, the timing gear on the, for the camshaft. You want this pointing down towards that dot. I used ARP. Uh, bolts for this application because uh, this is a three bolt cam so anytime you have a, a three bolt cam you need to use the proper get bolts for it the factory uses this one bolt cam and then you have one bolt at the market cams as well you just need to pay attention to what you get make sure you get the right gear according to your application Once you get close, you set one bolt in by hand, and we'll get all the bolts. You just might have to pry just a little bit just to get it centered, but once you get it right where it's supposed to, She'll slide right on. Again, dot to dot. <sighs> so, as I was showing you the the cam gears and explain the difference between a three bolt and a one bolt I didn't even catch that at the time we ordered accidentally ordered the wrong cam gear so when you order a cam timing chain set uh, you gonna have a single reluctor like this and a four pole reluctor and you see that it has four markings this is for your camshaft timing and depending on the year of your engine so this is a 2000 this motor came out of a 2009 so it's a more later model so um it has this four pole uh reluctor and the earlier models had only this single pole it's something to pay attention to but right now um this kind of put a delay on us for a few days until uh, we were able to get these parts ordered and uh, shipped towards us so something to pay attention to remember because you'll put this motor together and it won't run make sure you take note of a single if you have a single pole four pole if you have one bolt or three bolts and that's gonna uh, uh, make a major difference later in the future thank god we caught this now because it's something that we could easily overlook. Put the motor together. Car will ran either ran like garbage or not run at all, and we wouldn't have been able to find out right away. So, take note, and don't make the same mistakes that we did.